Phil, we've known each other for a lot of years. I can't believe we've never actually fished together. Where are we and what have you got planned for this week? Well, Mark, we've got you in Idaho. We're standing right in front of Henry's Lake, one of the most famous stillwater fisheries in North America, mm -hmm. and we're gonna try and get you a grand slam. Yellowstone cutthroat, brook trout, and a hybrid. A awesome. cutthroat rainbow cross. Okay. Where we're gonna be in the shallows, working weed beds, creek mouths, those kind of structure. It should be fantastic fishing. We're here in the beginning of fall. Fall time is the right time to come to Idaho because there's nobody here and the fishing is on fire. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. For the stillwater fly fisher, Henry's Lake is one of North America's premier lakes, a bucket list destination for many. Henry's Lake is a diverse fishery, providing anglers with a chance for a Henry's Lake Grand Slam, a cutthroat, fantastic, brook trout, or hybrid. The rainbow cutthroat hybrids Henry's Lake is famous for are special. In ideal conditions, they can reach gargantuan proportions, well in excess of 10 pounds. Mark and I hope to shake hands with at least one of these monsters as the weather and the conditions ahead look promising. During our stay, Mark and I will be based out of the Drift Lodge and Fly Shop. They pride themselves on being Henry's Lake specialists. Mike Wilson, along with his wife Jamie, own and operate the easily accessible Drift Lodge and Fly Shop. Here you'll find a well-stocked shop coupled with a variety of luxurious cabins to base your stay within the Island Park area. We have 15 rental cabins, including the main lodge. Anywhere from a standard single, basic single queen cabin with, you know, own bathroom, refrigerator, microwave, basic just get your food facilities. We have four person cabins with kitchenettes. We have four to six person cabins with full kitchens. And then our main lodge, it's a three bedroom, three bath. It'll sleep up to 12 people. In addition to a full service fly shop catering specifically towards Henry's Lake, they also offer guiding services on other lakes and streams in the area, including Yellowstone National Park. For Mark and I, it's always a bonus to fish with local guides and to work with a fly shop that specializes in stillwater fly fishing and is familiar with the various nuances of a lake such as Henry's. Fishing in the area is excellent. We, we are blessed being located right here where we are. We're only three miles from Henry's Lake. We can have you on the Madison in 20 minutes. You can be down at the ranch. We don't guide down on the ranch, but you can be fishing on the Henry's Fork on the ranch within 20 minutes. It's just fishing heaven. As the fall progresses, trout are becoming more and more aggressive. As water temperature drops, as uh, due to cooling air temperatures, trout are becoming more aggressive and feeding on bread and butter food items. These are items that live in the lake all year long. They never uh, emerge or transform into anything, or if they do, they have prolonged aquatic life cycles. So we're talking about minnows, leeches, scuds, immature dragonfly nymphs, immature damselfly nymphs, even coronamid larva or bloodworm. They're coming in and feeding on whatever they can to build up those fat reserves that are gonna get them through the long, cold winter ahead.
flipping it back, just making that fly move. That indicator just plunged. Not sure what we got yet. We've got a chance of big hybrid, which is a cut rainbow cross, pure Yellowstone cutthroat, or a brookie. So we're just fishing at a balanced minnow on. I've got a small micro leech above that too, about four feet down, so we're a, a foot or so off the bottom. And just letting that wave action dance the fly, and it looks like he ate the minnow. Sure what he is yet. He's fighting pretty good. He looks like a hybrid. You got that nice chop to get the fly animated, but I gave it a little strip and boom, under she went. Yeehaw. Look at that. Thank you, Kim. Grab that fish. Beautiful. He's got that balanced minnow right in the snout. Look at that little cut marks under his chin, but a beautiful, beautiful Henry's Lake hybrid. These get big here. 10, 15 pounds, huge fish. Let's give him a drink. There you go. So as with all fly fishing, finding the fish is always the trick. In the fall months, you're gonna be targeting shallow water, typically less than 10 feet, often less than five feet. You're gonna be looking for weed beds because that's the supermarket where food lives. You're gonna be looking for places that'll provide fish oxygenated, cool oxygenated water. So on Henry's Lake, lots of springs, and we have creek mouths as well. And then you're gonna be looking for moving fish. We call it the two fish rule. If you see a fish move more than once, twice, you get over there and toss a fly at it because a moving fish is an active fish and can be coaxed to take the fly. Oh, fish. Just as Phil was letting his go. I come tight with what looks to be a cutthroat. They don't quit, do they? So this fish actually hit once and then came back and hit it again. Sweet. So these are Yellowstone cutties, yeah? Yes. So, on the white zonker again. There's a the fly. Yellowstone cutthroat, neon, almost neon gashes, fluorescent gashes, and very sparse spots from the front to the back. Darker fish, but 100% fun on fly. Wrong way, go north. There you go, bud. So, short strips with some attitude, and that's what keyed in this fish. Um, took it on the pause, hit it once, and then spun around and ate it. Probably tried to kill it, and then finished the job. I've never fished Henry's Lake before. I'm very lucky because I've got expert Phil Rowley here to guide me through, because he has fished this multiple times. Phil, things are in change. We're moving from summer to fall. Fly lines, what do you like and what are you set up with? Well, normally in the fall, floating line for indicators, long leader fishing with beadhead patterns, and a clear intermediate. Yeah. But what we're finding is because the fish haven't really started targeting any fall food sources, shallow water stuff, scuds, leeches, that kind of thing, we're triggering grabs with fast retrieves. So because we're moving our flies fast, we can use fast sinking lines. So I've been using a, a type three uh, line, a short leader, and uh, that's been working well, aggressive strips. I know you've been using a fast sinking combination. Absolutely, I've got a 11 foot sink tip on this line that sinks at about seven inches per second with again, a short leader um, and a leech pattern, fast retrieves, and it's lighting it up all day long. Yeah, the fly line is not overpowering the retrieve because we're moving the fly so fast to trigger those grabs. Rods, we're both using six weights. Yeah. Get good sport with the fish, helps us deal with any wind. We can chuck some bigger flies. Yeah, you're in a 10, you're in a 10, 10 foot three, yep. I'm at a nine foot rod. The yep. reason why I've got a shorter rod is because it's a fast action rod. I have a lengthy sink tip on this line, so I need that 
power that fast action to get that fly line out. Yeah, and for me, the longer rods with the slower sinking lines are great. And with indicator setups, one of my primary ways to present with an indicator setup is a roll cast. Right, so let's talk about leader and tippet. I'm a big believer with uh, sinking lines to have a short, mm -hmm. short leader and tippet material. Yeah, generally, the faster the sink rate, the shorter the leader. A single fly setup, of course. You add another fly, you extend a bit. But, you know, in your situation, you could uh, take a leader and cut it back, a standard taper leader and cut it back, or you could make a level leader out of two sections of tippet, maybe 2x connected to 3x, right. five feet of total overall length, yeah. and you're fishing. Yeah, so I've got my leader set up as only between five and seven feet, and it's working fantastically here on the Henry's Lake. So we're drifting over water between seven to 10, 12 feet deep, using a type three line, because I've got to compensate for the drift. The faster the drift, the faster the sink rate, and I've got a two fly rig on. So on the point, I've got my black beaver and tan, and about four or five feet off of it, off a separate dropper, because I love having my flies work in their own water, not inhibited by having one tied to the other, I've got this bright orange attractor fly, and the fish are targeting both. So they can come in eating the dark fly, got good contrast between flies, you can eat the attractor, or this fly can pull fish in to investigate, and then they turn down and eat the fly below. So that's a great little dropper system, three to five feet apart. The clearer the water, the greater the fly space. We are definitely picking out what the pattern is for these fish, and it's all about speed. Speed is what you need here uh, this afternoon for these cutties, hybrids, and brook trout. Um, the faster you are, it seems, the more reactive they are. I love brook trout. I think brook trout are probably one of my most favorite freshwater fish to catch. Um, the places they take you, the people you meet, the colors of them, it's just amazing. And they've brought us to Idaho. Oh, yeah, that's a good, good fish, man. What an absolute pleasure to be able to meet guys like that. Just a fantastic fat brook trip. We'll get them wet. Absolute textbook. Nice. Sweet, Sweet fish. How long have you been fly fishing, Henry's Lake? I'm 64, and uh, my first trips up here were at about 10 years old. And um, so, 54 years. So when fall comes around in Idaho, everybody starts thinking about hunting. And that's really when your best fishing is here on Henry's Lake. I mean, there's a great chance of hooking one of these big hybrids and also, you know, six, seven pound brooks. As the fall progresses and winter gets just right around the corner, they are really staged up and they're big fish. And a lot of times we'll just sneak up on them, motor off, hear a fish turn and throw a big streamer at them. At the Drift Lodge, we've really focused on Stillwater and Henry's Lake. The uh, great selection of Bill Sheese flies up there and great rod selection. We can wait her you up. We can get you ready to fish this lake. You could come show up to the Drift Lodge Five minutes later, head out that shop and be ready to catch some fish. I've been guiding at the Drift Lodge for about four years, and every year our number of trips continues to grow. Uh, we welcome you to come see us, come visit with us. We can put you on fish, we can get you the right gear, and give you some technique and help you catch some big fish. You called it, Phil, as soon as that chop picked up. Game on. This is a good fish, too. Feels great. So why are we fishing here? Good question. Henry's Lake is a flat bowl, if you will. I think the deepest part of the lake is about 17 feet. Um, so as Phil Rowley says, it's like a big, giant shoal, the whole thing. But what we're looking for is, keep him out of the anchor rope. What we're looking for is creeks coming in. And a great way, if you're new to this lake, to find the creeks is if you can find the pencil reeds, the green pencil reeds, which we have over here, um, that's where the creeks are coming in. And these fish are enjoying the cold water coming in from the creeks. 
that is oxygenated, brings in bait fish, brings in food, and therefore brings in big trout. All right, nice hybrid. Great fish. So, not too bad for our first day at Drift Lodge and Henry's Lake. Tell you what, I can't wait for the rest of this trip because it's gonna be absolutely stellar. That one's a small one. They grow up to 10, 15 pounds in this lake. This one's maybe two, maybe three. All right, let him go. So Mark took that fish right at the end of the cast, and that's very common when you're stripping flies on lakes because the fish lock onto that fly, they follow it, they follow it, and as you raise the rod at the end of the cast, you cause two things. That fly accelerates and it changes direction, and that triggers that following fish into striking because he thinks that fly's getting away from him. So you can use a technique at the end of every retrieve we call the hang, just a slow rod raise like you're going into a roll cast, pause that fly for a second, and let that fish take the fly that he's been following. Ooh, we are on. That indicator just roll casted it out there. Not sure what he ate. We got a little micro leech on and a bruised balance leech. Actually, both are bruised. I think he ate the upper micro leech with the, I call it a baby leech. Still that bruised color, but with a hot orange bead. It's a perfect chop for indicators and a great way indicators allow you to control two critical presentation elements. The depth of your presentation governed by the distance between the indicator and your fly or flies, and the retrieve speed, oh, nice fish. It's a hybrid by the way she's fighting. Long rod just cushions the tip and these long rods are perfect for indicator fishing as well because they really allow you to form nice roll casts. And it's, that's a great presentation cast for indicators, simply because it's arguably the most tangle prone system. With that indicator on, thin, thin leader, multiple flies, swivel, a lot of things that can get in the way of an overhead cast. And the beauty with a roll cast is that fly only comes out of the water as you push or the, the rod forward to complete the cast. That's a nice fish. There we go. Woo! That is a nice hybrid. And he's got, still got that baby leech right in the top of the snout. Typical indicator set. As you pull it in, look at that. That is a chunky fish. Still got the leader around my fingers, but indicator fishing on lakes. It's a great method. You should add it to your to your repertoire. Let's put them in a net and we'll let them go. When you're fishing indicators in lakes, I use four retrieve options. It's not just a heave it and leave it out there uh, proposition. You can definitely move the fly to induce fish to take. The first option is literally that though. Literally cast it out let the wave action or the ripple dance that indicator on the surface that's transmitted to the flies below and can be very successful. You can certainly move the fly as well. So a slow hand twist just to cover water from where the flies and indicator first landed back to where you're going to cast again. Again, you're moving those flies through the water in the hopes of intercepting a fish. You can also use a long strip that'll actually create a wake on the indicator. This will rise the flies up and as the indicator pauses, they'll settle down. That movement can attract fish within the neighborhood to your flies and expect a pull down immediately after the indicator has stopped. The fourth option is on a light wind day is actually to cast the flies upwind and let them drift back towards you and simply gather line. Fish tend to feed upwind in these situations and it's a great way to present leeches and bait fish the food sources that are gonna swim downwind into those feeding fish. Many times I incorporate the first three into a single presentation. I'm gonna cast out, 
let that fly sink and settle. I'm gonna let it sit. Then after a little while, I might give it a hand twist, four or five turns, let it sit. I'm gonna give it a strip, let it sit, and so on until the retrieve is complete. Pay attention to which technique works and then consistently do that to catch lots of fish. Whether you're using the strip retrieve or hand twist, water temperature is another factor that affects your retrieve speed. Generally, as the water temperatures cool, the fish's metabolism slows, you've got to use slower retrieves. So let that water temperature be your guide for your retrieve speed. So I went to mend the fly, because when indicator presentations, we do use techniques such as mending and reach cast to make sure we have that straight line connection between ourselves and the indicator and the flies below. So I went to make a little mend, that moved the flies, indicator just dove under, we've got a fish on. I think it's a hybrid again. Ate the upper fly. Got that little baby leech, baby leech, tied on a little jig hook and right in the mouth. Thank you, Ooh, not a bad little fish. You can see there's the, all twisted up here, but that's the bruised leech below. And then this is the little micro leech on the dropper. Always like to put my heaviest flies on the point so they don't foul up and cause tangles. That's a beautiful hybrid from here. Henry's Lake. Let Kevin do the honors. Phil, let's talk about fall fly selection here at Henry's Lake. What do you recommend somebody bring along? Well, trout are in an opportunistic frame of mind. They're focused on bread and butter food sources, mm -hmm. so it's not very taxing on the fly box. Right. For Henry's, you want to make sure you have a good selection of streamer patterns, zonkers. You were having good success with Kevin's GT3. GT3, yep. Leeches, balanced leeches if you're going to hang them under an indicator. They're also great cast and strip flies because of that jigging action. Exactly. And smaller leech patterns too, because yep. you were fishing with the electric leech. You started with a bigger one, downsized, boom, you started catching fish. And as the season progresses and those weeds start to die down, more food sources become exposed. And scuds, for example, are another good fly to have represented in your box. Right, so as the season wears on, the, the, the offerings that are coming off the weeds are getting smaller, but the forage fish, you have to go upsize on that. Sometimes, um, it depends on the species. Um, but generally, the, the guide we use in the fall is things are getting smaller because most of those insects that are gonna overwinter are in their immature stages, so they're actually smaller. They won't be big again until, until the following right, season. Gotcha. All right, so have a variety of flies in your box in different sizes, and you'll do great. Nice hybrid. Now that the wind's slicked off a bit, I have a funny feeling this is the calm before the storm. We're supposed to get a big weather system move in for the weekend. And oftentimes, as with many different species, that is the best time to be on the water. As the barometric pressure changes, it has a, often a fantastic effect on fish behavior and fish eating patterns. So if you know that there's a storm coming in, get out there before it hits. But of course, be safe. And as things have gone on today, they started slowly, but they sure are picking up. Nice hybrid. Good fish, 18 inches, 17 inches. Nice one. He ate this. There we go. My name is Bill Sheese and I uh, guided on Henry's Lake for about 35 years and uh, some would say that I'm one of the gurus of Henry's Lake but I don't accept that. 
I uh, started designing my flies according to what the fish were feeding on at that time. A lot of times early in the year, they will feed on uh, uh, leeches, mostly leeches, uh, large bugs, uh, then later on caddis flies, etc. And so during the uh, spring, we use large flies. We find found out, I found out that most uh, Henry's Lake fish are attracted to flies with a little bit of red in them. I did not uh, decide to write the book until after I had fished this lake uh, and, and until I had guided on the lake. I'm a uh, very detailed and note keeper with my fishing and everything else. I kept detailed notes on everything, what time the fish were biting, which wind, uh, the, which direction the wind was blowing when they bit the bass, what time of the day. Uh, during the 1999 uh, fish season, um, we actually had it uh, timed where we could fish different holes, and when one hole would die, another hole would be turning on. And that time, that, that time I was uh, guiding six days a week, full time, and uh, we were able to take uh, a lot of fish by doing that. We had days that we took uh, over 140 fish. But the book came from the notes that I kept, the maps that I drew, I, if in my book you'll find hand-drawn maps, etc. The book is prior to GPS. And so you will see in the book, you'll still see landmarks that I used to line up certain holes in the lake. And that's how we found the holes. And at that time, we had a lot of people that would follow me. When I would move, they would move with me. And it was... It was uh, Sometimes ridiculous, but uh, that's where the book came from, is from the notes that I kept, the detailed notes. Whacked it pretty good. Feels bigger. Now, it could have just buried in the weeds too, but when it took the fly, it was a solid thump. And took it on the paws. I've been using quick strips with pauses three to four inch strips and the fly was just falling and it just zipped out of my hands. Just my concern is we're in shallow water and it could take me into a weed patch, but oh, this is throbbing and thumping. Got it on the, oh, now it's coming at me. No, now it's going away. This feels, I am cautiously optimistic for a big fish. Henry's is known for big hybrids in excess of 10 pounds, even 15 pounds. So we've been hoping for something at least half of that. And this feels like a solid fish. This is why you come to Idaho and you come to Henry's Lake. This lake, if you're a still water enthusiast, which I am, this is one of those lakes you read about and you say, I'm gonna I'm coming here one day. It's a spectacular setting. Big, powerful. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh my lord. Scooper, my friend. <laughs> I don't know if I can. You're going to have to sit this baby down on my lap. I don't know if I can hold her. Look, Look at that thing. Holy smokes. That's why you come to Idaho. That's Henry's Lake, one of the few places in North America that you can have the chance to do battle with something like this. The stories this fish could tell, the food it's eaten, it's spectacular. This has made my trip and my year so far on lakes. This is why you fish the fall, because these tanks come out to play. Let's put you back, girl. Oh. Are you kidding me? A 13-pound hybrid. We worked hard all week for a giant fish. The cutthroat, the hybrids, and the brook trout are fantastic here, but to land a 13 and get her, let her go, Woo! it doesn't get any better than that. That was awesome.
incredible experience. If you haven't heard of Henry's Lake, I sure hope you have now. <laughs> Put this lake on your bucket list. Fly, drive, bike, crawl, walk. <laughs> but you need to get here so you can experience this for yourself. For all of us here at the new Fly Fisher, I want to say thank you, especially to Captain Kevin yes. for guiding us to Absolutely. the biggest hybrid I've ever seen in my entire life. For more on our series, check us out at thenewflyfisher.com. For everybody at the new Fly Fisher, I'm Mark Malnick. I'm Phil Rowley. I'm Kevin Skenendor. And we're here to say, come to Henry's Lake. Woo! The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada.